Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish, and pretty much everything in between. And this is part 70, Purity Seals, talking about how to paint Purity Seals in pretty good detail on a model. So today we'll be using this awesome Dread Knight to paint the Purity Seals on it. As you can see, it has several on its body, on its upper torso, and on its leg. And we've painted them in uh, good detail using a couple different methods, just with a couple with a slight variation steps. So today for the red part of the Purity Seal, the ribbon, we'll be using the Fist on Red. An optional step is Caraber Crimson, Evil Sun Scarlet, and once again, an optional step would be Wild Rider Red if you just want to add a little more variation into the reds. But I recommend at least Mephisto on Red and Evil Sun Scarlet. And for the paper parts of the Purity Seal, we'll be using Xandri Dust, Ushabti Bone, and Agrax Earthshade to apply it a slight filter to make it look older and more worn out. So we'll start off with Mephisto on Red. And of course, I do thin down my paints ever so slightly with a thinner medium. That way it's nice and it doesn't obscure any details, doesn't go too clumpy. Mephisto on Red is a great color and goes over most colors with just ease, especially the way it's, it, right now it, they're kind of painted silver at the moment for the, uh, the Dread Knight. So we'll be painting all the top ribbon parts, just the Mephisto on Red, taking our time and getting nice in the, uh, over the entire ribbon. And there are two types of ribbon, uh, there are two types of purity seals on this model at the moment. Ones with the, the symbol in the center and ones with no symbol in the center. And I'll be talking about each one uh, just a little bit differently. And as I said, Mephisto Red is a great dark base color you want to use for uh, for the Purity Seal pieces. I like to paint the reds first and do browns after. But you could do either in either fashion. Next is Caraber Crimson. Now I'm gonna do this on a couple of parts. Uh, two of the Purity Seals I'm gonna use Caraber Crimson, two of them not, just to show you the difference. It's an optional step if you want. If you wanna add a little bit more darkness into the recesses, especially if you have the symbol ones like the one I'm doing right now, uh, Caraber Crimson is a great addition, but it's not required. You can just do an overbrush after with Evil Sun Scarlet and it will look pretty good. Uh, I just like to add uh, a slightly watered down Caraber Crimson into the shades just to add a little more uh, tone to it, get it a little darker, and it also gives that more worn out look to it. And here's the one without the symbol in the center. And uh, I, for these ones, I do personally like to use Caraber Crimson because it darkens the, uh, the recesses greatly. And then you just add a little dot of Evil Sun Scarlet in the following step. Just makes it look, a, it really does make it look a little more worn out and just gives you some better variation. So as you can see, the Caraber Crimson is on the, on the right hand side and um, the other one is not using Caraber Crimson. So there is a slight difference in the color, in the overall color and the recesses especially. So now we're going to give all the, the ribbon parts a, uh, an Evil Sun Scarlet overbrush, just focusing on the raised areas, leaving the recesses, the nice dark Caraber Crimson or uh, Mephisto on Red. As I said, so just focus on the symbol and the outside part of the ribbon. And if they're the hollow ribbons, like the one on the side, I always like to add a, a dot in the center of the Evil Sun Scarlet so that the edges are much darker than the center. And now it's time to do, uh, this is again an optional step, but I always like to add another color in there. So I just like to paint the top half of the, of the, uh, of the ribbon. Wild Red or Red, just just that that's where the light source would be hitting, and it adds a little bit, just another bit of variation. So up close, it really does it does pop, but it, it does blend quite nicely if you do if, if you thin down your paints like I do. But again, and it's an optional step. The two required ones I recommend are Mephisto on Red and Evil Sun Scarlet. But if you want to add Caraber Crimson or Wild Red Red, it just adds more variation to the ribbons and makes them look good. As you can see, I'm just focusing on the areas which my light source is hitting. And now it's time to face to work on the paper parts of the purity seals. So of course, I give it a base coat of a thin down sandry dust. That way it doesn't go on too clunky. Now you can actually add it on thick if you want. And all it does is if you show the brush strokes, it, it is a, um, a way to age it when you're combining it with an Agrax Earthshade. 
because then the lines will just appear and it looks aged, but I like to just keep my paints thin. So I'll just give a base coat of sandry dust. Make sure to get complete coverage over all the paper parts and not get any on the nice ribbons that we just worked so hard to get. And then next, I, I go straight to the highlight. And the reason is I don't want to apply an Agrax Earth Shade over the Xandri Dust. That'd be too dark for my taste. So I like to do an overbrush and focus on the raised areas and leave it a little bit along the edges and the recesses of the Xandri Dust, but focus on all the raised areas with Ushapti Bone, since it's a really nice bone tone. Um, of course, I would not recommend stopping after this particular step because they are very pristine and perfect and very nice and shiny. And on a model like this, they'd probably be a little more worn out. So we'll be applying a filter in a moment, uh, just a an Agrax Earth Shade to tone it down and give it that older, more worn out appearance. But now, it, applying it over this color, you end up with a lot more realistic of a tone and it's not too dark and uh, dirty. So as I said, I water down an Agrax Earth Shade. I use a one-to-one -one mix of water and Agrax Earth Shade and then just apply it a little bit on each purity seal as you can see like this. It does pull up a little bit in the recesses and on the edges, which is great, but it doesn't just overtone the entire purity seal. It keeps it a really realistic tone. Uh, it does more, look more worn out and aged, which is great. I don't apply it to all the purity seals in the model. And you can pretty much stop here. As you can see, they look nice, they're aged, they look good, uh, and it's a real realistic tone, and they look great. And in my opinion, this is a pretty standard paint style for purity seals. But many people like to have the squiggles on the paper to, sim to just show like it's writing from a distance. And so what I recommend is if you wanna do that, use an artist's pen, like this one. It's a very small micron pen, and uh, it's a very, very, very fine tip, as you can see, but they can be found in most art stores just an artist pen, and you find the, the basically the thinnest one. And you can take this pen, because it gives you unbelievably great control over where the squiggles go. Start at the top, and just do squiggly lines across the purity seal. And what I typically do is, in seals that have more than one band, like the one I'm doing right now, I try to like alternate. So I pu I'll put the next one in between the lines, so that way it's not just one constant line going over the purity seals. And see, I just did some squiggles across the purity seal, and then the next band I'll start in between the lines of the previous one and just uh, do squiggles along there. That's all you really do. You can do cleaner lines if you want, or more squiggly lines, but uh, I just like to do this from a distance. People like to, some people like to have these in the purity seals because it gives them that realistic, as if there was a handwriting on them from a distance. And I'll just repeat this process on the other one. The great thing about this Dread Knight is it has such large purity seals, so. Great. Other option for this is just use a very, very sharp ended uh, paintbrush, a very nice fine tip, and use ink, uh, your own, sorry, your own paint. But I prefer using this artist pen because uh, it just saves a lot of time and it gives you un as an unbelievable control over the squiggly lines. It's much easier to use. And that's it. So now we have these purity seals with squiggly lines on them to symbolize writing. So either one, you can stop before this or continue on with this, depending on whatever style you like. But either one, it's a great way of painting purity seals in the end. And they do look, I think, realistic and uh, have some good color to them. So as always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. And stay tuned for part 71, which is just around the corner. But if you can't wait for next week, check out The Warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel, where not only we get to see the next six months worth of Miniature Painting 101 episodes, you get to see over 50 start-to-finish painting tutorials, dozens of battle reports, face-off episodes, an Airbrush 101 series, stuff that you'll absolutely love. So go ahead and check out The Warp. I think you'll love it. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.